the truck was going to change everything. But one thing's for certain. Elon Musk rewrites every industry he walks into, and the future of long-distance trucking has already begun its second phase. Just like the tunnels Elon Musk proposed was going to solve traffic. It's then lowered into a tunnel. The sled is then moved along a track at very high speed. That turned out to be a single extra lane of slow-moving traffic driving underground taxis through storm drains between three destinations, where it would have actually been quicker to walk than take the loop. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. Now, there are a lot of naysayers out there who think that Musk just can't do things, like, say, for instance, debunk the Tesla Semi. In fact, there are even some who would say that it would be impossible for him to debunk it. Well, let's see who's right, shall we? The truck was unveiled, of course, in 2017, which is currently about five years ago. with a promised delivery date of 2019. And pr production begins 2019. So if you order now, get the car, the truck in two years. Which, of course, never happened. But Musk wanted to open his presentation in 2017 with a show-stopping, revolutionary thing, the one dream fix that was on every haulage operator's wish list. He's there way I can make my truck accelerate fast enough to damage the cargo. One thing we care about Tesla is we really care about performance. We want, it, we want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else. And he goes on and on about this. Starting with performance. So we have a, an acronym we came up with um, <laughs> that uh, I think really, really describes the performance well. Okay, fast forward to the uh, delivery event where they maybe deliver a truck or two. And the amazing truck has one fifth of the range of a diesel truck. And Musk decides to debunk this by showing us how many times this truck with amazing performance overtakes anything else. Yeah, compared to how many times it's burned off by other trucks. Yeah. Give it a moment. I'm sorry to bore you. I apologize. It's boring. I know. Eventually it'll get there. All right. Musk's calculation here for the zero to 60 takes maybe. This is the real time acceleration of a Tesla Semi. That, uh, on the left, the thing that looks like it's not moving <laughs> is a diesel truck. So, you know, Give it a moment. And in the end, he concludes that it takes maybe another 30 seconds more for the diesel truck to accelerate. Hell, let's call it a whole minute. Out of a six or so hour journey, that's about 300 or so minutes. Congratulations, Elon. You've saved an entire one third of a percent of the travel time. And there were those who said it was impossible to debunk the Tesla Semi but Musk has done proud for us. And if you're sat out there thinking, yeah, but no one could have been stupid enough to think that a truck that accelerates really quickly was a really good selling point, I think you're overlooking the existence of Musk fans. With three motors, it can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in just 20 seconds, all while towing 80,000 pounds. That's three times quicker than a normal semi. It'll bring the cost of shipping down for everyone. And those reasons are why the recently delivered Tesla Semi is a game changer for the shipping industry. And I want to be clear, Musk is talking here about a one third of a percent increase, improvement in the journey time. This is real time. Okay. The, the, Tesla, the Tesla Semi will go zero to 60 in five seconds. But at what cost? Remember, the truck was going to run on sunlight. And, uh, and, and that means we can guarantee the electricity rates because this, these will be solar powered mega charges um, that uh, charge to a Tesla power pack is 24 7 guaranteed low electricity. Um, and it's assuming $250 ga gasoline price. We're guaranteeing a 7 cent kilowatt wholesale price. I want to be clear about that. This is real. These are real numbers. For 
seven cents per mile guaranteed. And they needed that number to show that their truck could beat rail. The, this, so it's, what this means is it's, it's not just economic suicide to use one diesel truck, it's economic suicide for rail. This beats rail. Sorry, what was that, Elon? You want to debunk the Tesla Semi again by telling us how, how much do you currently charge for uh, supercharging? Oh, 50 cents. And that's what the Tesla superchargers, and it's likely going to be much more expensive for the truck because the superchargers are relatively small and cheap. The mega charger for the truck basically requires its own power substation merely to charge one truck. But we realize that trucking, the economics of trucking matter tremendously. If, if, you have a if your cost per mile is too high, it, it doesn't make economic sense. You can't make it work. Yeah, we in the business, Elon, call that foreshadowing. All of the factors, the, the fully accounted for true cost of trucking, a diesel truck will be 20% more expensive than a, than a Tesla Semi per mile. So. And all he needed for that was uh, $2.50 per gallon gas and uh, 7 cents for a kilowatt hour of electricity. And the electricity costs, according to Musk, have gone up by a factor of about seven. But hang on, wait, I, I'm, I'm confused. Musk was telling me that the trucks were going to run off sunlight. And, uh, and, and that means we can guarantee the electricity rates because this, these will be solar powered mega charges. Did the price of sunlight suddenly get more expensive? Oh, that's right. About half of California's electricity generation is from burning fossil fuels. And of course, on the occasions when the Tesla infrastructure simply can't hack it, they have to start running diesel generators to make up the shortfall. Okay, okay, that was a nice debunking mask, but I've got to, I've got to be fair. I've got to rein it in a bit here because it's also true that gas prices have gone up a lot in the uh, five or so years since the uh, unveil event. So gas prices are now almost twice what they were when Musk gave this talk. So let's assume his price per mile is mostly the gas cost. So we'll roughly double that. Meanwhile, his uh, electricity costs for his truck have gone up by a factor of about seven. So let's modify this chart a little, shall we, Elon? But we realize that trucking, the economics of trucking matter tremendously. If, if, you have a if your cost per mile is too high, it, it doesn't make economic sense. You can't make it work. <laughs> Having a Tesla Semi will beat a diesel truck on economics, day one. <laughs> And this is at this is a worst case scenario. So it gets better than this. This is the this is the this is the worst case scenario comparison. This is taking max vehicle gross. It's it's going at 60 miles an hour, um, and it's assuming $250 ga gasoline price. We're guaranteeing a seven cent kilowatt wholesale price. But Musk making such a song and dance about the uh, about how the mega chargers would be solar. And because these, these, these mega chargers are solar powered, your truck is running on sunlight. Okay. Well, that was five years ago. And you'll be shocked to find out that there's actually no evidence of these mega chargers at all, let alone solar powered ones. And you don't have to look at the numbers long or hard to work out why. But we can come back to that one later. But maybe there was a reason why the truck was so delayed. I mean, what were they, pandemic and all? And boy, did the genius at inventing worse copies of things that already exist have some hot takes on that. So back on the 6th of March, 2020, oh, coronavirus panic is dumb. And this was when only about three or so thousand people had died in China and a few hundred in Italy. And three weeks later, when it was largely idiot proof to see where this was going, he was tweeting, based on current trends, probably close to zero new cases in US by the end of April. Oddly, at almost exactly the same time that he was saying that, I was making videos saying that you could expect about 3 million dead in America if you did nothing. You know, that would just be the simple worst case scenario. Now, in the end, it wasn't quite the worst case scenario. It was only about a, a million dead. And those are probably global numbers in that if you take a look at the excess deaths in countries, it's typically about 30% higher than the recorded deaths. And sure, this was with mitigation, and you can haggle about whether it was worth it or not, you know, in that it mostly killed bold people. But even if you're happy with that as a trade-off, 
The viruses have been with organic life for billions of years. And they didn't do that by standing still. They have the ability to adapt, Commander. A million or so dead is more than all of the US war dead for the last hundred years. And that's including two world wars. And if you know a thing or two about viruses, you'll know that that was probably still dodging a bullet. This could have been much worse. Meanwhile, redneck yokels like Musk are all like, sure, the career scientist who served under every president since Ronald Reagan was just playing the, the long game to see if he could trick idiots into wearing mouth coverings. But Musk's smart. Musk see through Fauci tricks. Yeah. Well, I suppose at least it generated a few cheap laughs on Twitter. But the one thing that you can say for certain is there was only a small window of opportunity for shutting down the new kid on the block. And Musk was utterly oblivious to the danger and made some of the most spectacularly wrong predictions ever. And now he's having swipes at the guy who, relative to Musk, was hitting bullseyes. But now Musk is the owner of Twitter, and he's maybe learning the importance of early action in shutting down viral activity. Because apparently they tried to ban the uh, going viral video of Elon Musk getting booed on stage with Dave Chappelle. You know, he was trying to ban it because he just cares that much about the truth. But, but, but the truth matters to me a, a lot. It really, like, sort of pathologically, it matters to me. Yeah, what happens when you leave the echo chamber, Elon? Yeah. And Musk followed up his swipe at Fauci with, Truth resonates. It sure does, Elon. It sure does. In fact, the best news source on the internet has now reliably reported that the truth resonated so hard with Elon that he had to get one of his brain chips installed simply such that his shattered ego could cope with the aftermath of the booing. Meanwhile, Musk forced the opening of his Tesla plant, causing an outbreak there. After all, why should employee safety get in the way of the richest man on the planet buying himself another ivory back scratcher? But I've been watching the Statens worship Elon Musk and failing upwards Theranos style for years now. Make some noise for the richest man in the world. What was that? Richest man in the world? Regret to inform, sir. Not anymore. In fact, at his current rate of wealth loss in, in just over a year, he'll be the poorest man on earth. Can I get a hell yeah! Hell yeah! Oh, but there's more. You remember how Elon Musk originally said just as his money would be the first into Tesla, his would be the last out. Then forgot about his uh, commitment to the shareholders and then sold off Tesla stock after Tesla stock after Tesla stock leading to him to be prompted to try and reassure people earlier this year that he'd finished selling Tesla stock, then proceeded to sell another five or so billion of Tesla stock, crashing the price still further. And now with the Tesla stock having lost over 60% of its value this year, he's just sold off another $4 billion of Tesla stock. Yeah, when your stocks have lost to over 60% of their value and you're still saying, yeah, it's a good time to sell. I do believe I smell fear. And um, having apparently just bold-faced lied to his stockholders from day one, apparently now in 2022, he has signed under oath that I never lied to shareholders. I would never lie to shareholders. How's that word again? Perjury? But since he bought Twitter, it's been glorious. Whereas people before were like, uh... Yeah, what he's doing seems stupid, but this is because he functions on such a different level to you. You just can't think at his level. But if you've been under a couple rocks and you don't know why, this video will explain it to you. 
Elon Musk multitasks better than you. Very few people have influenced more global industries all at once. And as the ambassador of future tech behind some of the world's coolest toys, this young billionaire's passing resemblance to Tony Stark is not a coincidence. But after the fiasco of buying Twitter, everyone can see it now. There never was any 4D chess. It was just bullshit. The guy who was supposedly the CEO of a half a dozen or so companies managed to faceplant hard, making it clear that he was responsible for all the stupid stuff going on at Twitter. And this was with him seemingly 100% at Twitter. I mean, really, if he's working 16 hour days. I mean, I'm really working at the absolute most amount that I can work from morning till night, seven days a week. And you're tweeting 80 times a day. That means you're tweeting every 20 minutes for the entire day. He's doing nothing but sitting on Twitter all day which is working out so well for him. But with Twitter now not paying rent on any of its worldwide offices or severance packages or so on. And if that's what his full-time attention looks like at Twitter, kind of leads to the obvious conclusion. He never did much for the other companies either. He was never the agent of success. He was just good at laughing at it and taking credit for other people's stuff. But paying four times over the odds for Twitter. And then before he bought Twitter, he was like, yeah, no, all that shadow banning and algorithmic demotion, that's evil. We would never do anything like that. So there's, there's no sort of behind the scenes um, manipulation, either algorithmically or manually. And then proceeding to reinvent shadow banning within a month or so of buying Twitter. The net effect will be over time that the, the verified users will be, will pretty much always be at the top of, of comments and so you have to scroll far to see the unverified uh, users. Congratulations Elon, you've reinvented shadow banning. Why I should be surprised, I'm not entirely sure. The man who has done nothing other than reinvent worse copies of things that already exist. At 12, he built a video game he called Blastar, which started his lifelong love of inventing things that already exist. And then cancelling that plan after a week or so, after wiping billions of dollars off the stock value of other companies due to impersonation, or the latest in the long list of Twitter drama, where he exposed the evil shadow banning under the last Twitter management, and he was gonna open up the doors and let in some fresh air until someone at Twitter leaked that they were shadow banning the guy who was tweeting the flight of Elon Musk's private jet. You know, all the embarrassing stuff like uh, how the guy who wants to transform the world to electricity. So what's the mission of the company? The mission of the company is to accelerate sustainable energy. And so it's, it's super consistent with that goal. Oh, he's taking a flight from one side of San Francisco to the other. But no, shadow banning under the last dictator was evil. Under me, it's perfectly fine. And anyone who leaks against the glorious leader will be sued. Specifically, as evidenced by many detailed leaks of confidential Twitter information. Yeah, yeah leaks of confidential Twitter information. Lead by example, Elon, lead by example. A few people at our company continue to act in a manner contradictory to the company's interests and in violation of their non-disclosure agreements. Non-disclosure agreements? That's odd. I, I thought sunlight was the best disinfectant here. I can't quite imagine, can't quite remember where I heard that, Elon. This will be said once if you clearly and deliberately violate the non-disclosure agreement that you signed when you joined. You accept liability to the full extent of the law and Twitter will immediately seek damages. Cause you know, that's how free speech absolutism rolls. It, this is not about the economics. It, it's for the, the, the moral good that you think it will achieve. You're, you've described yourself, Elon, as a free speech absolutist. <laughs> because this moves at such a pace, I was about to put this video up and Musk goes off again. This time claiming that the guy who is saying where his jet was, was live doxing his position and that it's a physical safety violation. Yeah, it's a little drama queenie saying that, you know, someone knowing where your jet's flying to is live doxing your position. And he also said that anyone who even reported on this sort of thing was also guilty of the same thing. 
And we'll be banned. The New York Times, who were, were banned, were, were, you know, they were reporting on it in the course of sort of pretty normal journalistic endeavors. Um, you consider that like a tricky attempt at ban evasion? You show the link to the real-time information, ban evasion, obviously. I, I, Drew, I don't think you were posting the real-time information, right? I mean, you're, you're suggesting that we're sharing your uh, address, which is not not true. Um, and you're suggesting that we're That's we're posting. True. We never. Uh, I I never posted your address. You posted a link to the address. We posted a link. We in in the re course of reporting about Elon Jet, we posted links to Elon Jet, which are now not online um, and now banned on on Twitter. And and Twitter also, of course, marks even the Instagram and Mastodon accounts of Elon Jet as as harmful. Which was the after the fact justification for Mr. Free Speech Absolutism to ban multiple journalists from Twitter. He went on to claim that tweeting where his jet was was not just a threat to his life, but the life of his kid. And that's why Mr. Uh, Free Speech Absolutism was taking legal action against the guy tweeting the position of his jet, even though he had already banned him. Now, apparently now, just posting where his jet was, was supporting harm against Elon's family. And that's why he was suing the guy. Yeah, if this seems a bit of reaching, he reached even further, posting a video of someone who he claimed was stalking his kid. And if you're thinking this sounds kind of contrived drama queen stuff, you might be right. Because if you really did believe there was a threat to your family here, you would report it to the police, right? Not for Elon Musk. Apparently, the threat to his family was so great that he never bothered reporting it to the police and instead just posted it on Twitter. And if you're wondering what happened there at that group call with all those journalists, well, the second Musk got a little bit of pushback, he just rage quit. I think what everyone's wondering is that it's highly unusual for journalists at the Washington Post and the New York Times to be have their Twitter accounts suspended. And it just so happens that it's, you know, the, the, the boss in charge, you know. Uh, so, you know, what's the deal there? Oh, I think, I think Elon has, uh, has left. And the next day, after the European Union said that they were just going to let Twitter randomly ban journalists, and that there were red lines and sanctions soon, and that free speech was not a toy. After that, Musk suddenly randomly reversed the ban on a load of these journalists. Chaotic doesn't quite touch it, which might go some way to explaining why the third largest stockholder of Tesla called for Elon Musk to step down as CEO. And it might also be why Tesla's approval rating is sinking into negative territory. But let's see, getting back to the uh, selling point of the truck. They were very keen to show that the truck would breeze up a steep gradient road. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. And as someone who's driven across the United States several times, coast to coast, I can tell you the number of freeways with steep grades on them a few and far between. And for those that are on the steep grades, it's only like 10 or so miles, 20 kilometers, that sort of thing. You know, road makers tend to like flat, straight roads. But hey, we don't need to speculate. We can have Elon Musk bust this one too. So we talk power, you wanna talk efficiency? So with this amazing 500 mile journey, there's the steep segment, let's call it 5% of the entire journey. Now, Musk originally reckoned that the best diesel trucks could only do 45 miles per hour up such a gradient, while the Tesla semi would do 65. The best diesel trucks can only do 45 miles an hour up a 5% grade. Tesla semi can do 65 miles an hour up a 5% grade. Yeah. Oh. Which for Elon is 50%. What this means is that if, you've got a, if you're pulling a load over the Rockies or some mountainous terrain up a hill, uh, yeah, let me just briefly stop you there. As someone who has driven over the Rockies multiple times, the number of freeway stretches that have 5% grades are still few and far between. You're earning per mile 
you're earning 50% more per mile than you are in a diesel truck. That's a gigantic difference. But whatever, a third and a half, not so different. So let's give him 50% on the 5% of the journey that's on a steep gradient. So it's gonna save an entire 2.5% of the journey time. That's a gigantic difference. And add it to the one third of a percent he saved from his uh, super acceleration. He saved maybe a uh, 3% of the journey time. Yeah, same about the costs. But it won't really matter anyway, because you'll only be able to do that for the first month or so because of battery degradation. See, the two worst things that you can do to a battery are almost fully discharge it. Oh, and or rapidly charge it. A uh, high power charger, so we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Ah, so let's take this study that showed if you're 100% discharge a battery, your lifetime till you get to 80% capacity left in your battery is about two to 300 cycles. The Tesla Semi, <laughs> just, just doing day trips, will reach that within about one year. I mean, currently the Tesla Semi does its 500 mile journey with a few percent to spare. And after a year or so, its range is only going to be about 400 miles. So it looks like they're just going to need another Tesla Semi to go out and tow the other one in. In fact, they're going to have to start towing the Tesla Semi after about a month. <laughs> but hey, that's the experience you get for a truck that is guaranteed to go a million miles without breaking down. And that's why we are guaranteeing that this truck will not break down for a million miles. Yeah, there you go. It's a Tesla truck with a service battery coming up to it. Tesla service truck. Big Rick Wrecker. Meanwhile, Tesla fans be like... The ...focus on the outrageous specifications that Tesla has laid out. However, the specs have never been a problem. And when Tesla delivers, the skeptics will be left dumbfounded. <laughs> And of course, it is assuming that the truck makes the 500 mile journey only once per day. Yeah, exactly. So to be clear, like we're, these semi trucks are, are running 24 seven between uh, uh, Tesla using the trucks continuously day and night uh, between um, here and Fremont and, and back again. If they have team drivers going backwards and forwards, you can shorten the battery life to about six months after about a hundred or so thousand miles. And that's before you factor in the augmented battery degradation from supercharging. Let's compare that to a diesel truck, shall we? Oh, they do about a million miles before their engines pack in. Well, no problem. You just pop in some more batteries and you're done. Right? Well, the semi's battery was meant to run for about 500 miles at about two kilowatt hours per mile. Uh, hours two per kilowatt mile. hours a mile. Yep. So it's going to be about a megawatt hour battery. That's about the equivalent of 10 Model X battery packs, costing some $130,000, $140,000, that sort of thing, which needs to be replaced every six or so months. Well, unless you're happy with towing your trucks in for the last 100 miles or so. In fact, now might be a good time to take a look at how much trucks actually cost. So with diesel trucks, you have to haul around a big engine, which turns the gas into power. And that weighs a ton or so. With electric trucks, the engines tend to be much smaller, but you need a big battery. So in terms of cost, bottom of the range truck, you know, like the Tesla Semi, just a day cab, nothing special, will cost some forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, with the engine costing some ten dollars to $15,000, that sort of thing. So that's a quarter of the cost of the truck, you know, truck costing some 50000 or so dollars. The Tesla Semi's battery alone costs $130,000. The battery alone costs three times as much as a regular diesel truck with a 500 mile lifetime of months. And the diesel truck will go a million or so miles with a range of 2,000 every time you fill it up. Meanwhile, the Tesla Semi, with its duty cycle designed to destroy the battery, is going to do about a tenth of that. Now, to be fair, some of my thoughts and then analysis on Musk's haulage numbers were maybe a little harsh. But let's be real, compared to Musk's numbers, which are a complete cloud cuckoo land, you know, the one thing you'd be absolutely certain of if he's dodging giving the numbers of how much cargo the truck can actually haul, you know 
but it's not good. I mean, when you get your regular semi, it's basically covered the flatbed with concrete versus the Tesla semi here, uh, not so much. But you get the fans gushing over this amazing Tesla semi hauling Teslas, pulling an entire four Teslas versus a diesel, which, oh, oh, that seems to be a little more than four, that's two, three, four, six, nine. Looks like nine to me. Now, those of you critically minded out there might point out that, ah, yes, but electric cars typically weigh a lot more than gas cars. And you're right, it's basically the difference is the weight of the battery, which for the Tesla Semi is about five or so tons. The weight of about mm, two, three, four, four cars. Yes, yes, I know, when you've got a full load out of cars, the one thing you really want out of your truck is ludicrous acceleration. We want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else. Because with a million dollars of cargo, you really want to test the destruction, how well those cars are tied down. <laughs> you know, if you want to really capitalize on that one third of a percent saving that Musk was so proud about. But the point about electric cars typically weighing more than the diesel counterparts, typically by about the weight of the battery, is basically the difference that you see here. The mass of the electric vehicle increases by an amount that is slightly more than the weight of the battery. This happens everywhere, every time they do it. The Platinum S Super Cab. 2.246 metric tons, that's what it weighs. This is the combustion one, okay? The Lightning version of the same thing, 3.116 tons. The difference, 870 kilos more. And the battery, well, it weighs 818 kilos. A Hyundai Kona combustion, and you turn it into electric, the 64 kilowatt hour one, it goes up by about 390 kilo. The weight has increased by slightly more than the weight of the battery. And this happens everywhere. Yep, a battery that weighs as much as a few cars. It's going to be entertaining when one of those catches fire. And just a little bit expensive. In fact, this also dropped whilst I was making this video from Reuters. Apparently, PepsiCo says the truck can only go 500 miles while carrying essentially no weight. Sorry, uh, crisps and that sort of thing. And while it's loaded with heavy stuff like soda, it'll only run 100 or so miles. It also came out that the uh, weight of the Tesla Semi was a closely guarded secret. Odd thing to do when it's one of the most important metrics of the actual truck. Yeah, it's almost like they're kind of trying to hide something. It also came out that apparently there are no mega chargers. People who buy the trucks basically have to make them themselves. I want to be clear, this is from day one. So it, from day one, having a Tesla Semi will beat a diesel truck on economics. Day one. And this is, at, this is a worst case scenario. So it gets better than this. This is, the, this, is the, this is the worst case scenario comparison price. We're guaranteeing a 7 cent kilowatt wholesale price. I want to be clear about that. This is real, these are real numbers. And it only gets better than this. This is a worst case scenario. And like I was saying, each one basically requires its own substation to charge. And if you want to do it from solar, forget about it. I mean, you basically need some vast solar array and a huge battery storage system for when the sun don't shine. I mean, let's look at some basic sensible minimum requirements for solar charging, shall we? I mean, you're going to need a battery roughly as big as the truck battery at some point, you know, because you need to be able to charge it if there's a cloudy day with not much solar power. So on top of the truck, which is going to cost, say, 200000 you're going to need a spare battery, which is about another 150000 before you get on to the cost of the solar array. And it has to be able to charge in winter as well. And even down in California, you only get about half of the solar energy in winter. So, to charge merely one truck, you need a solar array that can pull in a megawatt hour of sunlight during the course of a day, maybe in winter. It needs about a megawatt hour over, let's say, 10 hours. You're basically going to need a 100 kilowatt installation, at roughly 3 to $5 per watt installed. You're looking at somewhere between a third and half a million dollars for the solar installation 
merely to charge one truck in one place for one day. Not only that, the installations would be ludicrously big, roughly being as large as about 100 house rooftop installations. I mean, hell, just imagine what the land rights for an installation that size would cost. And unless you've got the land rights to build huge solar arrays actually at the depot, where Musk says it's gonna be charging. Well, the, the tank gets filled. As compared to charging a, a, a Tesla truck, you can charge at your origin or destination. So while, while you're unloading your cargo, you can charge. Um. Well, it looks like Musk's original claims are bullshit once again. Like, uh, yeah, who could have seen that coming? And for reasons like this, it's small wonder that Tesla haven't built any of these themselves. And because these, these, these mega charges are solar powered, your truck is running on sunlight. Okay. So in summary, with the Tesla Semi, Elon Musk has invented a more expensive, harder to use, less durable, less versatile version of something that already exists. And unless Tesla decided to do something completely crazy, like share basic numbers about how much the truck weighs or how much it actually costs, I think we can happily say from our back of the envelope calculations that the Tesla Semi is about as well thought out and executed as Musk's takeover of Twitter. And that's today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up because this one's just been an ongoing train wreck. And as ever, if you really like the work of this channel and want to support it directly, because I'm not touching any of that commercial sponsorship crap with a 10-foot barge pole, which deep down, I love. And deep down, I'm sure you appreciate it as well, not having to sit through some crap about some raid shadow leagues or something. Uh, let me just say, I'm very grateful to those who support this channel through Patreon. And if you want to join them, links below. And... Uh, as ever, thanks for watching.